Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how we can quickly get started with the Hive 5. So as some of you may know already, a few months ago, the Strange Bee team, who is the team responsible for development on the Hive, released their latest version of the Hive called the Hive 5. And in this video, we're going to quickly deploy the Hive 5 and explore some of its new features. So what is new with the Hive 5? Perhaps the biggest and most significant change is the new modern web user interface that they have put together for the Hive 5. Uh, the previous version of the Hive was, the interface was, it worked, but it did drastically need a modern overhaul. And that is a big piece of what the Hive 5 is offering. They have also included new features such as case timelines, uh, notification systems that are built into the web UI. So it's a little easier to config from a user's standpoint new dashboards and some new widgets and also the ability to create your own knowledge base within the hive uh, there's a lot of other features that they've included but these are some of the the key ones that i wanted to, to highlight for this video and some steps that we're going to follow in this video we are going to install the hive 5 but we're going to be using docker to do so a uh, fair warning this is not a production build of the Hive. This is just simply to get you guys started with the Hive 5 to be able to explore some of its new features before actually deploying it into a production type of environment. So a fair warning there, in later videos, we will cover actually deploying the Hive 5 within our kind of recommended production type of deployment. And then we're going to navigate through the web UI so we can kind of familiarize ourselves a little more with it there. So let's go ahead and get started. And all right, so I'm on my box here and in this demo, I'm going to be uh, deploying Docker on Ubuntu 20.0.4. Uh, Docker supports a wide range of, of operating systems, but the specific commands within this blog post will be ones built for an Ubuntu box. Uh, so we're going to be following along with that. And on the left is our medium post, which I will also link in the description below. Previously, we deployed the Hive version four, and I've linked to that video on the blog post as well for you to take a look at if you're interested in sticking with the Hive 4. The perhaps one of the other biggest changes with the Hive 5 is the new licensing model uh, that they have taken. So there still is a free version of the Hive that you can download and run. They also offer a gold and platinum that give you the ability to take advantage of more features, um, add more organizations, add more users, uh, so and so on and so forth that they detail further below. There are some significant limitations, unfortunately, with the free community version. Right off the bat here, you can see the number of users. We can only have two. Number of organizations can only be one. So unlike the Hive 4 previously, we could deploy as many users and organizations as, as we wanted to. Uh, we could deploy as many Cortex and MIS servers as we wanted to. And there were some other features that unfortunately are now only bundled with the gold or platinum licenses. So those are also detailed detailed here as well the hive five or the hive four i believe is being end of life at the end of this year being uh 2022 so if you want to stick with the hive four to take advantage of you know maybe to take advantage of more users or more number of organizations that you want to include uh, I would recommend sticking on the high four because if you do jump up to the high five, uh, you will have some significant limitations that may not fit well for what you are providing with, with your own instance of the hive. So just a fair warning. So let's go ahead and jump into our install here. Uh, so first we need to install Docker. Uh, this is gonna be a very quick and easy install. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these commands here. And these will grab the Docker repos and the GPG keys that we need. And then we will finally install Docker and it'll be as easy as that. <laughs> and all right, so we now have Docker installed. Uh, if I do a system CTL status Docker, we see that Docker is up and running. So that looks good. Now all we need to do is deploy the hive. Uh, the so the Hive team has built a Docker image that we can easily use to deploy our test instance of the Hive. So again, this is not a production build. 
So if you guys are familiar a little bit with the Hive's back end uh, that we touched on when we installed the Hive 4, such as Cassandra in Elasticsearch, we actually aren't having to install Cassandra or Elasticsearch on any standalone servers uh, for this deployment because they are actually baked into the Docker image that we're about to pull and run here, which, which is nice. However, again, this is not recommended for production build. I recommend following and deploying these steps within your own lab or demo environment just so you can kind of familiarize yourself a little bit with the hive before you actually release it into a production environment so in future videos we will focus on deploying our own cassandra 4 uh, server deploying our own server running cassandra 4 and our own server running Elasticsearch, which is the back end that the Hive will need to connect to to store its cases, logs, alerts, all that stuff. Uh, so we'll focus more on a production build in future videos. But for the scope of this video, all we simply have to do is run a Docker run and uh, the dash R M here will remove the container when it exits. So anything that we thought we saved within the web UI, such as like if we create a new user, a new organization, when our container exits out, exit out, exits out, that that data won't be safe. So this is pre uh, if you wanted to keep it persistent, you could remove this flag here uh, and that would store everything on the local file system still. So when you spun the container back up again, it would persist with any created users or organizations or whatever else you, you added to, to play around with. So fair warning there, uh, we're using a dash P here because the Hive by default listens on port 9000 is what the, the web UI listens on. So we're going to expose that port so we can connect to it within our browser. We are then specifying the Docker image that we want to grab. And in this case, we're, we're grabbing the strange B are the guys behind the hive. So we're reaching out to their Docker hub and we are going to pull the hive image. And here I'm just gonna pull the latest image, which would be version 5.0.5-1. So that is what this command will do here. And all we have to do is copy and run this guy and everything uh, will be deployed for us. So we can see Docker is reaching out to their repo and grabbing the image. And then we are going to build our container. And then Docker is going to build our container, which will host the Hive app, uh, Elasticsearch and Cassandra as well. So here within a few minutes, we'll be able to deploy, we'll be able to connect to our Hive web user interface. Uh, down below as well, there are also some other options you can uh, play around with if uh, if you'd like to, I'm not going to touch on these in this video. We will cover these in later videos, such as pointing to our own Cassandra backend, for example, or uh, creating using a new index name instead of the default, the Hive one. So we'll get into some of these kind of advanced advanced configuration changes uh, in future in future videos. But now our 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 container looks to be up and running. So now all we're going to do is point our browser to our IP address in port 9000. And by default, it is HTTP. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste my IP address in there. And then this guy is listening on port 9000 and we should get prompted with our login interface. So let's actually go ahead and log in. And by default, the admin credentials are admin at the hive.local and then slash secret. So for our first so for our first login, uh, those are the credentials we are going to use. And we are now into the Hive 5. Uh, so let's first actually change the admin password uh, to not be the default anymore. So we can select the we can select the username here and hover over uh, this. Uh, and hover over the admin user and select preview. And here we can reset our password. So here I'm going to edit the password and I'll just give it a password of please subscribe and then confirm. And I'll now verify that by logging back out and logging back in. So I'll use my new password of please subscribe and I'm now logged back in. So uh, first things first, I would, if you are exposing uh, this port to the internet, uh, I would highly, and even if you're not, I would highly recommend uh, first immediately changing the admin password. Uh, and now 
very similar to what we did before. Uh, let me change this to the US. Uh, we will first need to create an organization. So, so I'll select the plus icon and here I'll give it a name. I'll just call it. Please subscribe. And for description, I'll say open secure demo and I'll leave that as manual. That's fine. And I'll go ahead and select confirm. So now you see our new organization added. If I go ahead and select this guy, let's go ahead and add a new user to that organization. So for the type, I'm going to leave as normal. The type of service is recommended for API uh, authentication. So whenever we point our shuffle instance to the hive, uh, we'll create a new service uh, user account for that so we can interact with the API there. Uh, the login, I'm going to just say open secure at opensecure.co and name, I'll just say open secure. And my profile, I'll give it as an org admin. So uh, pretty similar roles and steps to how we created users in the previous version of the Hive. Uh, it's just kind of formatted and laid out a little, a little differently. So I'll go ahead and create that user. And if I select preview, I'll now need to set a password for this guy. And I'll just say, please subscribe and go ahead and confirm. And now let me log in to my new organization. So I'll log out as the admin user. That admin user is only really for managing, for managing the Hive instance. So creating new organizations, uh, creating new configurations, such as like authentication methods that you want to use. But any case management or alert management and stuff like that is all done within the org. And here you can see I am now in our open secure organization as highlighted up in the, the top right here. And here, if we uh, expand our tab here, we can see our alerts, our tasks, our dashboards. So very similar as before. Uh, so our, our the methodology around cases, alerts and tasks that hasn't necessarily changed with this new version. Uh, they are formatted now a little differently, though. But here, let's go ahead and just create an empty case. Uh, I'll give it a title of just test our, you know, we can set our severity and tags and all that stuff down below. I'll say test and go ahead and confirm that. And here we now we see our new case open up so we can add new tasks if we'd like to and type that all out here, uh, add new observables. So let's go ahead and add an IP address. So I'll just say 1.1.1.1. And I'll go ahead and give it a tag of test. And we see our observables added to our case. We can select uh, and view our live feed by uh, selecting the lightning bolt icon here in the top right. Uh, so we can see our a live feed of you know new cases being added, new alerts being added, uh, and user activity that's going on, such as when somebody closes a case or not, right? So I could uh, select this guy. So let's say, you know, we do our analysis and our, our InfoSec team has completed any analysis that needed to be done on this specific case. Uh, we will select the X to close the case. And here we could select a status and I'll just say false positive and summary. I'll just say demo and confirm that. And we have now closed out our case and we can see the, the status uh, as a false positive has been populated here. And we can see that our, our case has closed after three minutes. And then if we select our lightning bolt here, we could see that our case has been updated and it has updated to a status of false positive. And then jumping back into the admin user side, if we select our platform management, here is where we can configure our license. Uh, if you choose to do so, here you can see the status of the Hive platform. So if you're having any any errors and you're looking to troubleshoot, uh, this is a good place to, to come to and you can actually trigger some integrity checks. So you can see if your database is, or anything is corrupt. Uh, if we select Cortex, you can point to your Cortex uh, backend server to 
run your analyzers and responders, which we'll touch on in, in a later video. Here you can select the authentication tab and you can uh, enable a different type of authentication. I believe the ones... So with the free version, you can enable two-factor authentication and you also get local authentication. It looks like you can't take advantage of single sign-on until you get the platinum version. Uh, looks like, yeah, which uh, <laughs> doesn't come very cheap, to be honest. And we'll get into some other more advanced kind of configurations in later videos. In this video, I just wanted to show you guys how you can quickly spin up a demo instance of the Hive version 5 on your own and kind of get familiar with the web user interface. So I would encourage you guys to kind of click around, explore, create some cases, create some alerts, and in future videos, we will take advantage of more advanced features within the Hive, such as you know running our cortex analysis. And it also comes with a new API um, that they provide with this new version so there's going to be some extra features we'll be able to take advantage of and be able to automate with shuffle uh in future videos so i think that wraps it up for this one i appreciate you guys hanging out with me and i will see you in the next one